into this word. You say, you, you said that before. What does that mean? That means be in a posture to get ready to receive. That means you're not just sitting back there in your lazy boy taking a cat. No, you're in a posture of receive. God, I'm ready. Come on, I'm, re- I'm going to pull. I'm going to receive from that word. I tell, uh, I do a broadcast on Friday, Friday Fire, and I always tell the people, if you're in a service, uh, I love, for this is participation ministry. This isn't a, uh, uh, just listen to it and, yes, yeah, spectate and, and just, no, no, no. This is a partici- participation meeting. This is a participation church. This is not about one person at all. It's about the army of God. It's about all of us doing our part. So I want you to lean into this because God has a word for you today. But I want to start out real quickly with a quote that just stirred me this morning. I I read it. And this is from uh, Lester Summerall. How How many of you have ever heard of Lester Summerall? Great general of the faith. And he says this. Notice that the demon possessed man in Luke chapter 4 did not cry out with a loud voice until Jesus got there. Those people sang their songs and said their prayers, read their scriptures, and the devil enjoyed it all. And when the power of God came on the scene, suddenly the devil became upset. Why? Religious ceremony is no threat to him. We can hold regular church services and demon-possessed people can sit right through them, right beside you, and be undisturbed. But when the glory of God is manifested and the Spirit of God is moving, the devil can't stand it. And I thought to myself, how true? How true can that be that the, the, the sinners are un? interrupted when you're playing church the devil is unaffected as long as we're playing games in the church nobody wants to get real this morning because maybe some of us are playing games but I'm telling you this is the wake up call ramp this is the wake up call that God is saying I'm waking up my bride he said it's time for us to quit playing church and be the church it's time for the bride to be equipped it's time for us to quit being the the pretty nice bride and for us to be the church the bride with the warrior bride the bride with boots the brides with weapons the brides that take down giants it's time for us to be the offensive army that God has called us to be he said I'm raising up an army in this hour I'm sounding an alarm he said how many people are sitting in churches all over this city this morning the most church city per capita in the world are sitting in churches all over this city and over this region and they're not delivered they're not set free they're not healed their circumstances don't change why because they heard a feel good powerpoint presentation but there's no power of God. I want us to turn in our Bibles. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're continuing the series this morning, Doors and Decisions. Doors and Decisions. The title of my message this morning is Take It Up. Take It Up. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to, Go through this quickly because I have some text. And I believe, music team, worship team, I want you guys to be ready because I believe God's going to move in this service this morning. And we're going to open the altars because some people are going to press through to another level. You're going to receive something new from God this morning. I said you're going to receive something new, not from me, but from God this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's read verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, 
but boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Did you hear that? More connected to this world more connected to their iPhone than they are to the Word of God, more connected to Netflix than they are hosting the presence of God, more connected to this, uh, this, this world than we are to the things of God. See, when we're so connected to this thing in this world, we're, of the, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. I, I said to my, my broadcast on Friday, Friday Fire, that... that I was playing Transformers with Gabriel the other night. Uh, he's my five-year-old, and we were playing Transformers. And he always wants me to be the bad guy, and he's always, he always gets Bumblebee and, and the good ones. And so I'm the bad guy. And so we're playing, and we're fighting with each other. And, I, you know, the, the Transformers are fighting. And so I get one of the other good Transformers, and the bad guy starts beating them. I know it's violent. Deal with me. <laughs> it's a different world when you have boys than when you have girls. You know, Juliana wants TD parties. Gabriel wants fighting Transformers and Ninja Turtles. And so we're fighting, and then Gabriel uh, uh, says something out loud, and it hit my spirit because he says, Oh no, not on my watch. And he, he's really dramatic. He, he's like, not on my watch. And he has the uh, Optimus Prime. And it, he has the Optimus Prime gets the bad guy, the one that I was holding, grabs it from my hand, and he begins drop kicking him. I mean, I'm like, be careful. That costs money. <laughs> Let's pretend like they're, they're fighting against each other. But uh, he, that not on my watch hit my spirit. Because I thought, how many of us are shutting our eyes? to what's going on around us. And we're just saying, Lord, come back. Lord, please rescue us. No, we're here for a reason. And we're not here just to sit in our pretty church and just just sit with one another in pretty clothes. And and I know this church is a little more casual, but in in dressed up clothes or dressed up jeans and and just say, look at my latest fashion or look how spiritual I am. And everybody glorify me because of my gifting. And man, didn't I really prophesy today? And didn't I really out sing everybody? No, that's not about that. God is saying, I'm looking for a people that will rise up and say... I see what is going on in the world. I see what's going on. I see the plot of the enemy. The other day, I walked in this room, and I was praying on these floors, and I said, oh, I see you, devil. I see what you're trying to do, but I take authority over you, for God has given me authority that whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loose in heaven. So I take authority over you right now, and I bind it in Jesus' name. See, he's looking for a people that will say, not on my watch. Not on my watch will I let my children go to the world. Not on my watch will I let them be dull to the presence of God and not understand. Yesterday I was in prayer and I was up in my prayer room and I was laying on the floor praying, you know, to the Lord. And my son, uh, he had stayed with me. I was watching him because my wife and daughter had gone, but uh, I was there pr- praying. I thought he was downstairs playing, and he comes down, he comes up, and he says, can I pray with you? And I'm like, absolutely, you know, uh, join me. And so he lays down beside me, and he begins praying. And as we're praying together, uh, I'm, I'm beginning to, to pray for the service, begin to pray for each one of you, your families, your, your homes, and I'm, I'm, I'm praying for all these things Uh, Then I begin to pray for Gabriel and Juliana. See, we can pray because God has given us authority. So don't think you don't have authority over your family. 
well, I'll just, whatever will be, will be. No, you've got authority. He said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So if your marriage has been under attack, then you better start binding the devil that would come in that would cause disruption in the unity of your family. If you're dealing with strife within a group or within a church, come on, you begin to take authority over that spirit that would cause people to fight with one another or cause people to be disheartened. And I've been felt an urgency in my spirit this morning to begin to uh, to pray for those that are out of their place of battle to get back to their place of battle back to their place of authority and so I I was praying and (laughs) I was praying for for my son and my daughter and my wife and, and and I began to I actually went and laid hands on Gabriel and I began to pray and I said stir up the gifts within him I mark him to be a man of God my children will never know the ways of the world they are called out for such a time as this they don't have to go through a rebellious phase they don't have to go through a phase of you know I'm going to experiment with it the devil's a liar purify keep them holy mark them move the wrong people out move the right people in I think sometimes we just give up on some things because it's difficult. So it's easier to say, well, whatever happens, happens. You know, that's, that's a cop-out when God has given us authority. You know, we get mad and we're trying to blame Washington for making laws that we don't like while we are asleep. Uh, we're playing religious games and we're trying to, to make everybody think we're the sweetest church in town. I don't care about being the sweetest church in town. I want to show love. That's, that's the, uh, that's, God recognized that's how they'll know you by your love for one another. I want to show love, but sometimes love is calling out sin. Sometimes love is telling people you're in the wrong. You got to turn. You got to repent and turn in the opposite direction. Sometimes love is saying you got to wake up or you're going to miss what God has for you. See, I, one of the most difficult things I think, and I'm getting back to the word, but I promise. One of the th- most difficult things as parents, I think, and parents, y'all can say a big amen here, is I think kids do not understand that punishing them does not make us happy. If they think that I really want to ground them or spank them and have the crying fit and, and you know, all these ruin the, the hour at least, they really think that that makes me happy. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get to. If you're a parent and you think that way, you need deliverance, <laughs> first of all. But that does not give us joy because who wants to deal with all? Just be good. Just do what you're supposed to do. You know? Sometimes I really think that. And I think God is saying to us, just do what you're supposed to do. I just, do, you know, get to your place of battle. Get to your, pick up your weapon. Do what I've called you to do. And here in 2 Timothy, this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Why? Because it's talking about perilous times? No. But I love it because this is telling us what we're seeing even in this hour today. He said perilous times, hard times are going to come. So Paul, his spiritual father, is saying to Timothy, his spiritual son, there's coming hard times times and he says this will be the description men shall be lovers of their own selves covetousness proud blasphemers this will be all these things that we're seeing today it sounds a lot like today and then we get to verse 5 and it says having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away having a form of godliness having a little bit of godliness a portion of god but denying the power thereof. See, we have power and authority. We have power and authority. God has given us delegated authority. If uh, something, let me explain this better in natural terms. If I say, Cindy, I don't want you to go do this, this, and this for the church or from, for Andrew Tao. I am giving her delegated authority to go do something. God has given to us 
delegated authority upon the earth. And yet some of us, oh my God, convict us right now. Some of us are going through motions without going through Without going through separation, without going through holiness, without going through... Sep- I-, I hear the Lord saying that he is calling his people to another level of consecration. So we want authority without consecration. That's dangerous. Get that again. Authority without consecration is dangerous. Why? Because we start do- using our authority to get what we want instead of what he wants. We begin to manipulate. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft. So when you're manipulating and, and playing these games and, oh, well, I'm going to do this and do that, that's witchcraft. You're on the verge of witchcraft. You better break free from it in your life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to even tiptoe my toe in, in, in anything that's not of God. But authority without consecration is very dangerous. He said in the last days, in the hard times, in perilous times, they will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. From such turn away. And then skip on to verse 6. He says, now as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. He said, now as the days of Janis and Jabris. I don't have time to preach all this, but who is Janis and Jabris? I've taught you before, those of you that have been here. Those are the magicians for Moses. That Moses, when Moses came into Pharaoh and, and threw down his rod, Aaron's rod, and it became a serpent. Well, then the magicians came up and threw down their rod. But then Aaron's rod ate their rods, right? Then he, he, he calls the, the water to, to turn to blood and called up frogs and did all these things. Well, Janice and Jambres were magicians for Pharaoh, and he did the same things. But there finally came to a point where they could no longer counterfeit the power of God. And I believe that we are in a day and an hour that we can no longer see counterfeits of the power of God. But he says to Timothy... As in the days of Janis and Jambres, how they withstood Moses. That word withstood is very important there because it means in opposition. It's the Greek word that is, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say it to you because I'm not from Greece and I, I, I will butcher it. But it means to stand against, to resist. And it comes from two Greek words. One is against, and the other one is histame, histame, best it's going to get. It's, it's where we get an antihistamine. It's one of the Greek words that, that is formed into medicine that is antihistamine. Antihistamines can make us drowsy. That's the goal of the enemy. As he wants to put us to sleep. Why? Because there is an enemy that is withstanding the God inside of us. See, if you don't understand that we're at war, you've already lost. You've been, if you're a believer, you've been drafted into the army of God. And we are at war, not with people, but spirits. Against the enemy. See, that's what happens is too many of us, we focus on people and we miss the real battle. But God is saying to us, they're going to have a form of godliness just as Janice and Jambres withstood. So we need to expect there to be opposition against the anointing and the word and the power that we carry. If we're not facing opposition, we need to reevaluate because if the devil's just letting us pass by and say, oh, that's good. Like the man that Lester Summerall was talking about in the Bible. He didn't get nervous till Jesus stepped in. He didn't get nervous with them playing church until the real glory came in. 
So as long as we are not being withstood, we need to re- reevaluate our walk. But some of you that came into this room that the enemy has been attacking you on every side, the enemy's trying to discourage you, the enemy's trying to tell you it's not worth it, this is too hard, you might as well give up. Am I talking to anybody? Uh, somebody saying, the enemy's saying go to sleep. You don't have to worship this much. You don't have to get up this early. You can just watch a nice little sermon on television why do you got to get to the house of God because one can put a thousand to flight two can put ten thousand to fight when two or three agree upon anything it shall be done you got to get back to your place of battle you got to get back to your place of war because God has said I'm calling you for this time I'm calling you for this purpose I'm calling you for this moment he said you can expect resistance In fact, if you aren't facing resistance, if the enemy isn't withstanding you, I'm concerned for you. And I've told this story a lot of times. I had a, we had a leak in the roof and, and, uh, we were having to get a new roof, and we didn't have the finances for it. I was praying, and, and every time it would rain, I would come and put trash cans and buckets. Up. Nancy, Josh, I know y'all remember. And it was just, I mean, my prayer life went up 200% whenever they were calling for rain. And uh, I, I remember an intercessor came to me, and they said, you know, I don't know if God's in this. There's a church down the road. They got $10 million as a donation, and Praise God for that. But it was like a sword, a dagger going into my my spirit. And I was like, I'm I'm fighting here. I'm 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 standing in the face of opposition. But but sometimes we think there will be no opposition. If we're in the will of God, I want to tell you, sometimes when you're in the will of God, it invites opposition. (laughs) And when you're in the perfect will of God, then all hell breaks loose. But the good news is that God is with you. The good news is you're coming out on the other side. The good news is that God will fight your battles. The good news is you've got power and authority that you can trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. <laughs> so you will be in perilous times. In perilous times, you will be withstood. They don't want to hear like this morning. I was thinking to my wife, did she not hear that alarm clock? I finally said, honey, do you not hear that? She's like, I know, I already told this story. (laughs) She wasn't in here. But uh, she was like, I can't find it. But see, so many of us, they don't hear because we're not sounding an alarm. Because we don't want to be withstood. So we'd rather make everybody feel like Jesus loves you just the way you are. Jesus does love you, but he wants to change you. He wants to transform you. Oh, I loved using my transformer not only to, to, to beat up <laughs> the other transformer, but I began to say, you know what? This is what God does. The word says that our minds uh, be uh, not conformed to the world, but be transformed. I said, God has a scripture about transformers. Gabriel's like, he does? I said, Yes. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the word of God. And I said, this is what God does. When we look this way, then he begins to pull on us and he begins to shift on us. And this begins to come together and this goes backwards and this goes. And then if we pull into something, next week I may bring a transformer and, and begin to transform it behind, before you and say, this is what God is doing. I know it's uncomfortable when he pulls you over here. I know it's uncomfortable when God begins to, to click you over there. And I know when he begins to bend you backwards, it's really not comfortable. But, but God says, I'm doing something new. And I'm transforming you to look like me, to sound like me, to do what I've called you to do. Just stay in the process, honey. Just, just don't jump ship, honey. Just don't get out of your place, honey. Stay planted in the house. Stay planted in the will and the purpose of God. God is transforming you. He said there was going to be a day where a form of godliness but denying the power of he said there's a counterfeit spirit that opposed Moses that's going to look like God but it's not God we have to stop being so enticed by gifting you know what I'm so I'm tired of hearing people prophesy into gifting so much 
So we're running after people. Prophesy about my gifting. Give me a word that God's going to use me. Give me a word that God's going to uh, use my voice. And I've been guilty of it myself. I've been guilty where I'm like, God, I just want to work. Well, God's already given you a word. You've got about 50 sitting in your tape recorder or on your phone right now or in your notepad right now. Why don't you put those to work and start warring with those words and saying, God, remember what you promised. Remember your word will not return void, but it will accomplish where unto it has been sent. But instead, we're chasing after new words. We're chasing... We're God is saying, I'm calling a people to consecration. I'm calling a people to, 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 to repentance. I'm calling a people to be pure and holy. He said, it's time for us to stop being, I know this is hard. Y'all stick with me because y'all are going to receive something. It's time for us to stop being all about ourselves. Prophesy, speak to my flesh, speak to my need. And one thing he began to deal with me on as a, a prophet and as a prophetic voice, he said, Andrew, I want you to begin to alert and equip the church. I want you to begin to equip the army of God. If you're so speaking, and not that God doesn't speak about our current situation, but if you're so speaking all the time in the current life here and you're not talking Talking about life there. If we're constantly just preaching to you about God's going to do this to, for you. Yes, God's going to do that for you. But we also got to say, hey, God is calling us to consecration. God is calling us to live holy because we've got a work to do and we've got, we're going to the other side. Oh, some of y'all do, don't like that word, but that's all right. That's okay. You'll get it later, I pray. I want you to look at 2 Kings chapter 6 real quickly. Mm. Don't tell me how I'm doing on time because I don't want to know. <laughs> I purposely don't have a clock in the house because I don't like to see. And in fact, I put my phone on do not disturb. So if you're texting me to stop or you're, you're texting me, it doesn't come to my watch. It doesn't come to my phone. And I'm just going to keep on preaching. Amen. <laughs> 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. Now, you understand, I want you to understand the context of this text. I did a broadcast. I, had a, I told our prophetic team, make sure and go watch that broadcast that I did on Friday. Uh, because I believe it's where we are as the body of Christ and as a team, as a church. And this is talking about Elisha the prophet. And it says, and the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Now, in another version, I didn't read it to you, but in another version, it said, under your leadership, it's too small for us. See, that's what happens sometimes when, God, when the enemy wants to get us out of alignment and get us out from under the, the, the protection of a covering he will tell us it's too narrow. It's too small for us. And so then he says, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us, too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thee hence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant, thy servants. And he answered, I will go. Verse 4, so he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Verse 5, but as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shewed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put forth his hand and took it up. Now I want to stop right there. If you didn't see the broadcast on Friday, you can go to my YouTube page or on Facebook and go watch it because I'm not going to re-preach the message that I preached then, but it was pretty powerful, the correlation between 
2 Kings chapter 2 where Elisha uh, received the mantle from Elijah and how it says that one man said to him go with us and then it says one man was uh, sawing with the axe head one man I believe it was the same man that asked him to come he was in another word saying I'm connected to you in the spirit so I'm asking you and he comes and then he loses something he loses an axe head what is an axe head an axe head is something sharp it is something to cut with it is something for apostolic building it is something for expansion it is something for increase it is something and the Lord began to speak to me and said it's the power of God in the life of a believer how many times of us are swinging away at something and we've lost the edge we've lost the the power we've lost the anointing somehow we've missed God in a way and so we're swinging with all our might but but without that key ingredient or that key factor, we will just waste our strength. And so many times at life, so many times at life, I don't know if I did that, but so many times at life we have an axe head and we have the handle There's no blade to bring down the tree. There's no blade to profit what we're building. So what we're doing is in vain. Are you hearing me right now? And this servant, this one, this one out of all the other sons, this one is the one that compelled the prophet to come with them. This one is the one that lost his axe head. And this one came to him saying, I've lost it. And it was borrowed. And I have no way of paying it back is what that means. He could have become a slave. Did you hear me? They could for this debt. It's not like going to Lowe's and buying an axe today. This was something very valuable. And he's lost it. And it was borrowed. So he could have become a slave to whoever the man he borrowed it from. And so he says, I've lost it. Now, there's so much teaching right here, but uh, go back and watch that broadcast. I'm not going to preach everything this morning, but he says, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed, verse 6 says, And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shewed him the place. Now, I, I, said, I did say in my broadcast, I said, This reminds me of Mary and Martha when Jesus came. And they said, we've, we've buried our brother. By now he stinks. He says, Take me to the place where you laid him down. And I hear the Lord saying to Ramp Church this morning, Take me to the place where you lost your edge. Take me to the place where you lost the power of God. Take Take me to the place where you were so withstood that you threw in the towel and say, I can't do this. Uh, This is too hard. I'll still love you, God, but I'm going to stop believing to see my family be put back together. I'm going to stop believing for God to save my children. I'm going to stop believing for the healing in my body. Come on, I know some of you have some things that God has promised you that you've given up on, but you have that axe head that's left and it's fallen off your axe and you're swinging away and you're wasting strength because you're being withstood but I want you to know the enemy's already defeated and the prophet prophet Elisha says unto him take me to the place where you laid it take me to where it fell and he shoot in the place and then he cut down a stick and cast it in thither and the iron did swim. Now, that's a lot of King James Version, uh, thither and hither. And, uh, but let me just paraphrase it for you. So the prophet comes to the waters. And he comes to the banks of the Jordan. Now, you have to remember this. You have to remember that Elisha has history with the Jordan. In the prior uh, chapter is when Naaman came and dipped in the Jordan. So he knows that the power of God is moving. But it was nothing connected to these waters. In fact, they describe it as it it being murky and, you know, there was much better rivers. But he knew that he had history. What they were singing about today. He had the lion and the bear. He knew he had history with God. Remember, when he saw Elijah, when he was called up into heaven, and the mantle fell, and he ripped his garment, and he put on the mantle of Elijah. 
Because he asked for a double portion. He put something on in Acts chapter 2, and I believe it was verse 6. It said that he took up the mantle of Elijah. I believe this one had such a connection to Elisha the prophet. The rest of them were ready to go build their own place. They were ready to go and say, give us permission. We're going to go get our own beams. It's too small under your leadership. It's too small what you're doing here. I I need some room to spread out. And so uh, they go. And he says, go. And if you study out that word go, it was not just a simple go ye. It was go. It was, it was, he had a little attitude behind it. But anyway, uh, he said, go. And this one came, will you go with us? Please go with us. I pray thee, go with us. And he says, I will go. And he goes. And this is the one that has trouble with his axe head. But there was such a connection between this prophet and that prophet. There was such a connection, almost the same connection that Elijah had with Elisha. He was uh, connected in the spirit. And he said, well, take me to the place. And I love how this works. Because uh, for years I've wondered, why did he take a stick? I mean, was he digging around there? But the word doesn't say he was digging for the axe head. The word says that he took the stick, broke it, and threw it in the waters. And then the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, Andrew, he took something that was natural and threw it into what had been lost. And something supernatural began to take place. I'm telling you this morning, God is about to add super to your natural. Don't think it's uh, not important what you have to offer to give to God. Don't think it's unimportant. Well, this is just a uh, stick. Well, David's was just a slingshot. But you can still bring down giants. You can still part waters. You can still see supernatural miracles. Now, a lot of people overlook this story of Elisha because so many great miracles happened in his ministry. I mean, dead came to life, and, and all of these things began to happen. So this is, you know, what, seven verses that we can uh, skip over very easily. But God didn't do these things and record these things just to show that he was a magician like Janice and Jambres. No. It was to show the power of God. And there's so much more. You can go prophetically into it even more. That the the stick was a piece of wood that was thrown in there. And what was the cross made out of? It was made out of wood. So it could be prophetic symbolization of the water was a form of baptism. And when he threw the cross and the price that Jesus paid, that the supernatural came forth in his... I mean, I was lost in this this week. I was just like, whoa... I'm like writing all this stuff down. I'm still developing what God is speaking. I'm still there because I, I was driving the car on the way here and the Lord began to speak something else to me. I was like, I got to write that down and study it out and make sure it lines up to the word of God. Come on. And so I, I was thinking of all these things, but he said to me, Andrew, there's a church and not this church. I'm not talking about a physical location. I'm talking about the church that has lost the power of God. They have settled for a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They're settling for religious routine, but we don't want the power. That's weird. That's, the people at work will laugh at me. They don't understand speaking in tongues. They don't understand all of these things. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to tell them I go to ramp church. That guy's too loud. They sing too much. They prophesy too much. I just want to go where it's 30 minutes it's an hour and I'm out of there I'm not for going long just to go long but I am about waiting for the moving of the Holy Spirit I am about contending for a move of God. And church, what he spoke to me this morning, what there is a stirring in the spirit. And for those of you that were here Wednesday night, we we, we, we made a decree that we were going to fast, we were going to pray, and we were going to intercede for this service. And I have been, and I know my intercessors have been. And those of you that are here this morning, it's not by accident. It's not by coincidence. God has something that he wants to impart to you. I believe right now that we are standing on the banks of some supernatural waters. I said, I believe we're standing on the bank of some supernatural waters. I believe it was Nancy this morning that was praying, say, we won't just go in ankle deep or knee deep, but we want to go all the way into what you are doing. There 
is a river that is flowing. There are waters that are being stirred. Are you hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? There is waters that are being stirred. And God is saying, no longer can we be satisfied with just a happy poem. We can't be satisfied with just sitting around in our usual church service, even here at Ram Church. And sometimes I think we think we're so spiritual. Don't get prideful. I'll never forget one day I remember going to a conference and I remember thinking, wow, this is really dead. But I'm going to bring the fire. And God said, really? You better lean on me to bring the fire or I'll quench your fire right now and I'll let you flop. And I said, Lord, I'm here to bring the fire, not for me, but for you. And I hear the Lord saying today that some of you have lost that edge. You've lost that that fire. You've lost that pursuit. I know we can't see it by the smile on your face. I know we can't see it by your prayer life or your faithfulness in attending church or, or any of those things, but inside you know, God, I want to burn again. God, I want that fire again. Remember how it felt when you first were saved? It was like somebody would just mention his name. It was like, Jesus? Yes, I want to talk about him. See, I love to be around people that stir me. I love to be around people that start talking about him, start talking about what he's doing, start talking about their zeal, start talking about what he's spoken to them, and it begins to stir me up to where I'm like, God, I want to get back in my prayer closet because I want to hear something fresh from you. I want to hear you like that. I want a visitation like that. I want something new. And the Lord is saying, I am coming in a way like you have never experienced. Hear the word of the Lord. I am coming to you in a way you have never experienced before. He said, some of you have lost the, the, the value and the cutting edge or the power of God you've been settling for a form of godliness I know you haven't been out in the world I'm not talking about that I know you haven't been in blatant sin I'm not talking about that but what I hear him saying is some of us have settled for a a passionless powerless Christianity and God is saying I refuse to settle will you settle or will you wake up will you say I will not I will not live a powerless Christian life I will not go through religious games I refuse to stay seated for another moment I will rise up I will be a part of the army of God come on stand to your feet all over this room musicians come on up I'm going to ask as many of you that can come. I want you to come to the altar this morning. I'm not coming so you can uh, pat me on the back or so that I can feel good in my flesh. No, I believe there's a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit that's going to hit your life this morning. I believe there's an edge coming back to your, your walk with God. I believe there's some cutting edge that's coming back. God's saying, I'm meeting you with power this morning. I'm meeting you with power. You said you're going to burn like you have never burned before in your life. Hear me. I promise prophesy you are going to burn for the presence and the power of God like you have never experienced in your life some of you have been in this thing a while some of you have been living God for, living for God for a while but I hear the Lord saying there's a fresh outpour of his spirit I want to refill you with the fire of the Holy Ghost I want you to get your axe head back I know you're still been swinging I know you've been doing it with all your effort but you lost the edge you lost the cutting tool you lost that thing come on if you pray in the holy ghost just begin to pray in the holy ghost